the year 2021 is quickly fading into the shadows and the year 2022 is quickly rising on the new horizon. And it's in our hearts and in our minds, I'm sure for all of us, the question, what will 2022 hold for me? What will 2022 hold for you? Well, I've always been of the conviction not to think about what the new week or the new month or the new year might hold, but to think about who holds the new year as well as the new day, the new week, the new month. And according to the scriptures, God created the heavens and the earth, and this is the day that the Lord has made, and I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. And as we look at that and use it for the new year coming, I think it would be good to think about that not only is the day the day the Lord has made, but this new year, because it will be a accumulation of 365 days that God has given us and 365 opportunities for us to rejoice in the Lord because he's made them. And I want you to think about that. I want you to think about that every day that you experience, every week, every month, every year, whether it's a year in calendar wise or a year in some other measure, even if it's a new year like this, new year 2022 coming up on us, God has made them ever since the first day of creation. Each day is a gift from God, and we're to make the most of it. Now, certainly, we don't know what tomorrow holds, but again, as Christians, we know who holds tomorrow. God's already there. And I want to leave you with a Bible verse or several Bible verses for this new year for you to claim as your own. Now, they'll be familiar to most of you because it's from Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. And these words read, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Isn't that wonderful? To know that you can trust in God, and he will direct our paths. Now, the scripture certainly says that it's not a trust that is a halfway trust, but it's a whole trust, a full trust, a trust that we cast ourselves upon God for everything and everything and anything that we need. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, with no reservations, no equivocations. And I'm so glad that in the new year, one thing we can know is that God will still be faithful. God will still be God. God can still be counted on and looked to to meet our every need. Someone has well written something that we can apply to every year, and it's just as true and even more true than those prognosticate and try to predict what the new year holds and, and not consider what God has for us in the new year. And these are the top 10 predictions for the year 2022. Number one, the Bible will still have all the answers. And aren't you glad about that? The Bible is true and amen. It's God's word. He says what he means, means what he says. And truth can never change. Truth is truth today as it was yesterday and will be forever. Truth is truth in every situation and in every time category. And God's Bible is his word, which is truth, and it will still have all the answers for all of our questions and all of our needs. Number two, prayer will still be the most powerful thing on earth. Right now, most of us have in our mind and our hearts what corona might bring in the year 2022. Will we ever get rid of that? If we do, what else relies on the horizon? You know, prayer can supersede any situation in our life because prayer is the Christian making his request to God and in doing so, demonstrating that we have faith and trust in God, that he hears our prayers and that he's able to do something about our prayers. Sometimes we say prayer changes things. Well, prayer changes us, but it doesn't change God. It'll move God and God will change things. And that's wonderful, amen? But listen to this. I heard this one time, says, 
if we can't have a heart that is moved to pray, how can we move God's heart if we're not going to be moved enough ourselves to pray and make supplication? God says, call unto me and I will hear and answer you and make your supplications made known unto me. So prayer will still change things in 2022 if we know to whom we're praying and know that he does answer prayers for his children. The Holy Spirit will still move. The Holy Spirit had not been removed from this world yet. And the Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity. And those of you who are Christians like me, the Holy Spirit dwells in us and he's promised to never leave us and never forsake us. And we can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens us. Amen? Amen. Number four, God will still honor the praises of his people. I'm so grateful that God is a God that we can praise. He's greater than us, and he deserves our praise. He deserves our adulation. He deserves everything that we can offer up to him. Someone has said that praise is our faith turned inside out. I like that, don't you? And the Bible says that God inhabits the praises of his people. If you will, it's bragging on God and I don't know about you, but I've got enough ego that I like to hang around people that brag on me, even if it's a false braggadocio. But listen, God doesn't have an ego. He doesn't need our praise, but he does enjoy our praise. He will still honor the praises of his people. Draw nigh unto me, and I will draw nigh unto you, is the word of God. Number five, there will still be God-anointed preaching. Aren't you glad for the preachers? and the teachers who teach the Word of God under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, under the unction of the Holy Spirit. Somebody says, I don't really know how to define unction, but I can tell you when somebody doesn't have it. And that's the wonderful thing about preaching. God can take an old crooked stick and he can hit, hit straight licks. Amen? And you just look at some of us preachers around and it's sometimes how that God will use us to our amazement even God honors his word, and you pray for your preacher that he'll preach the word, he'll keep the word, he'll live out the word and be an example of the word, and that he will be anointed by God, Holy Ghost preaching. Number six, there will be still be singing of the praises of God. I like that too. God still uh, is deserving of our praise, and we are still uh, going to sing praises to him. I'm so thankful for Sister Lynn who leads our church at Victory Baptist Church in singing the praises of God. Number seven, God will still pour out blessings upon his people. That's the kind of God that we serve. A God who blesses and he allows it to rain on the just and the unjust. Aren't you glad? You know, none of us deserve any of the blessings of God, but he blesses us and 2022 will be another year that we don't deserve the blessings of God, but because of God, and who he is, and his loving kindness, and his compassion, and his mercy, and because of his promise to his beloved son, the Lord Jesus Christ, in whom we as Christians reside, he will bless his children. We need to just say, Lord, help us that we'll be blessable, and help us that we live in a way that demonstrates our gratefulness to you, that we are grateful for what you do for us. We live in a way that's appreciative of your blessings toward us. Number eight, there will still be room at the cross. And I guarantee you that if anybody comes under the Lord Jesus Christ, he says, I will in no way cast them away. There's still room for you. If you've never bent the knee and bowed the head and opened your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ, he's still waiting for you. There's room for you at the cross to believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And therefore, Jesus still loves you. There's nothing that can diminish the love of God. You know, you think of it this way. Somebody says, well, God loves me more. No, God doesn't love you more. He loves us all more. He doesn't love anybody more to the exclusion that he loves somebody else less. God loves us with a perfect love, and his love can never diminish. Otherwise, it wouldn't have been a perfect love to begin with, would it? He loves you, he loves you, he loves you, and he demonstrated that love to you and that he gave his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for your sins when you and I didn't deserve it. He showed us how much he loved us. He just didn't tell us about it, 
He just didn't tell us about it through the prophets. He demonstrated it. He gave an example of just how much he loved us in giving the Lord Jesus Christ to us. And therefore, Jesus will still save those who come unto him. Isn't that wonderful? This is what we have to look forward to in the year 2022. God will still be the same. We as sinful human beings will still need him, and he will keep his children in his promises, and he will receive those who come unto him in faith by the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now, getting back to our verse, Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not into thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. You know, you acknowledge him by the reading of his word, by the keeping of his word. If you have your Bible open and you're in Proverbs chapter 3, let me read some verses prior to chapter uh, prior to verses uh, 5 and 6. And this is Proverbs chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. It says, My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God or the woman of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. In this, wor this new year coming, we're going to need direction. We're going to need correction. We're going to need instruction in righteousness. We're going to need to hear from God. And that way, the way that happens is to get into his word and allow his word to get into you. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And that's how we can have the mind of God the humility of God by getting into the Word of God and letting it humble us. That is, to let us know that there's not but one God, and it's not us. We need God, and God has so gratefully, wonderfully, mercifully revealed himself to us through his Word. He's left us a life book, a book to tell us how to live our life. In our lives, and that is, first of all, giving our life to the Lord Jesus Christ. It says, let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them upon thy neck. Write them upon thy, the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in sight of God and man. And this is simply saying, you know, try to live as a Christian toward your fellow man. Listen, be merciful, truthful. Bind these things, mercy and truth, about your neck. Some of you get some jewelry for Christmas, right? Think about wearing uh, the jewelry of mercy and truth around your neck. Bind them on your cells and demonstrate truthfulness. Be honest with your neighbor, your brothers and sisters in Christ. Be merciful with them, even as God has been merciful with us. And guess what will happen? He says, you'll find favor in the sight of God and man. Aren't you glad for those who've been merciful to you? Oh, I, I know that I'm glad that I've been, uh, that people have been merciful to me and I'm so grateful unto them. And then in expressing that gratefulness, I can be merciful to others that have um, done something to me that deserves uh, maybe judgment, but instead I give them mercy. Oh, God has given us mercy. And then we have our verses five through six, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not into thine own understanding. You know, there's going to be some things that probably happen in this new year, just like they've happened in the previous years, that we don't understand. You know what's one of the sad things and the glad things about this coronavirus in the last two years? Uh, the glad thing about it, that is, that which makes me glad, a lot of people who have been challenged, and we all have been challenged, have stuck to their commitment to Christ. And there's been times we had to close the church. There's been times we had to postpone the service, but they're right back. And they've been giving their tithes and offerings, and they've been continuing to minister to their family and to their neighbors, even though they haven't been able to come back. And that makes this pastor glad. But there's something that makes me sad. I haven't seen some of our members back since this thing started going on two years from now, uh, two years ago. And uh, I don't know where they are. I've tried to contact some of them, and then I haven't heard back in reply, and, and they, they're they just not there anymore. Uh, you know, we're going to go through the test, and the test 
is not to cause us to fail, but to help us to pass. You know, when we were in school, we thought the teacher was trying to give us a test to make us fail. <laughs> she wasn't trying to make us fail. She knew that if we didn't have a test, we wouldn't study and persevere like we should. And sometimes God sends us tests. And I want to say thank you for those of you who have persevered and you're still supporting your church. You're still witnessing. You're still a Christian. And you're not going to let the coronavirus be bigger than our God. God's bigger than any challenge, even the coronavirus. Listen to what it says in verse 7. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. That's something we know that we can continue to do and depart from evil because there's a lot of evil in the world. Continue to be holy. It shall be health to thy navel, marrow to thy bones. It just means simply health physically and spiritually. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. Simply meaning that in the new year, you're still to honor God with your substance. We're still to give tithes and offerings, but it's more than just tithes and offerings. Tithes and offerings is a demonstration of our worship of God. We give one-tenth every Sunday in the Lord's house to remind ourselves that it all belongs to God and in keeping of the of, in obedience to give the tenth. That's a tithe. And then our offerings, anything over that. But it all belongs to God. The 90% that you keep after you give the tenth is not 90% you get to do whatever you want to do. No, you use it to honor God too. And not only money, but your very being, your life. You honor God with your life and you share the gospel with others. He's giving you a voice. It belongs to him. Share the gospel with others. He's giving you feet and hands to work for him. Minister in the name of the Lord. He's giving you a brain to use. Use it for the glory of God. Whatever talents, whatever gifts that God's given you, use it for him. And listen to the promise again it gives us. When we give that first increase, not the leftovers, we give him the, the cream of the crop, that off the top, the very first tenth of our income when it applies to our tithes and offerings. It says, listen, honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of thine increase, so shall thy barns be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. You know, they're talking about a recession. They're talking about our economy. They're always talking about recession and economy. Do you realize there's never a recession in heaven? And God's economy keeps on clicking on every day. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust and thieves break in and steal and destroy. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where none of these things can get in and destroy them. You know, I've been laying up treasures in heaven and God is keeping them safe. Amen. You can't have any better safekeeper than God. What have you committed to him? In this new year, I'm asking you to commit yourself afresh and anew to the Lord. Trust in him with all thine heart. Don't you try to figure it out yourselves. Lean not unto your own understanding, but in all thine ways acknowledge him with your tithes and offerings with your life, with your brain, with your job, with your friends. Acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Again, we may not know what holds the uh, what the future holds, but we know who holds the future. Back in 1939, during the wartime in England, Great Britain, uh, George the Sixth was addressing King George VI was addressing the British Empire. And he picked up a poem, a line from that poem, by one who is named Minnie Louise Haskins. And it encouraged the nation of that time. And I want to leave that with you, to encourage you. And it's very biblical. She references God. She makes the appeal to the people to look to God. And here's what it says. And I said to the man who stood at the gate of the year, Give me a light that I may tread safely into the unknown. And he replied, Go out into the darkness and put your hand into the hand of God. That shall be your better light and safer than any known way. Isn't that wonderful? It may be dark on the horizon as you look at the new year, but that's all right. 
There is no darkness in the presence of our Lord. Put your hand in the hand of the Lord and say, Lord, you are already there in the new year. I don't know what's coming my way, but you do. And I'm going to keep my hand in your hand, and I'm going to hold on tightly because I know that you're going to see me through it, whatever it may bring. Let me pray for you as I pray for others and myself. Father, thank you that you're the God of yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And you're the God who changes not. You're still good and kind and wonderful, and you're still all-powerful, and you're still holy. And we're to live holy lives before you. And we know that we can't do that in our own strength. But that's why you gave us Jesus, that in him we might have our sins forgiven, that we might be not only cleansed of those sins, but covered in his righteousness. And Lord, in this new year, help us to realize who we are. We are a king's kid. And Lord, you love your children. And you have promised to never leave us and never forsake us. Lord, see us through as we know that you will, because you will work all things together for good to those who love you, who are the called according to your purposes. Father, I pray for our church members, and I pray for your church at Victory, and I pray for all the churches that lift up the name of Jesus. Lord, it's one year closer to his return, and help us to remember that he might come this year, he might come this month, he might come this week, he may come this very day, this very hour. Help us to be ready and help us, Lord, in doing so, trust in you with all our heart, not leaning on to our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge you and trust you, Lord, that you will lead us as you direct our paths into this new year. And we pray in the name that is most powerful, most precious, and most promising, the blessed name of Jesus. Amen and amen.